Is there anything more I can do for you? Me thirsty, Mama. Now that you mention it, my Barbie is feeling a bit poorly. After all, living in a bowl ain't too good for your health, you know? No, I did not know that. What would make your baby feel better? Fresh water, naturally. Of course. Not too sweet, though. In fact, the more better, the better. My children are very particular about what they drink. I will see what I can do. You reach out and pluck a large, juicy-looking lemon from the tree. You have run into an evil enchanter. Get out of here fast before he turns you into something. A healthy baby tree grows near the spring. It is a natural spring flowing from the rocks. A pool of water collects at the base. This item can... It is a simple clay bowl. Being... You fill the bowl with the fresh spring water. After using your sword to cut the lemon's surface, you squeeze some of its juice into the bowl. Then you discard the lemon. You pour the bitter water over the baby pumpkin. It seems to like that. Thank you again, Graham. Here, take this. The pumpkin reaches into her head and pulls out a candle, which she then hands to you. That thing has been jammed in my head for as long as I can remember. I know it ain't much, but maybe you'll find some use for it. Thank you. Don't mention it. Besides, it's really hard for me to sleep with that thing lit up inside my head all night. A word of warning. Hagatha has been talking about you. I heard her mention your name while she was muttering to herself. She does that when she's inspected her valuables. Anyway, I'd stay clear out of her way if I were you. I appreciate the advice. Will Hagatha not be angered when she discovers you've given your candle away? What's she gonna do? Turn me into a pumpkin? Good point. Besides, I could just blame the dwarf. He's earned himself a bad reputation from the day he moved here. Pity no one can catch him, not even Hagatha. If I may ask... I appreciate all you've done, Graham, but I want to spend some quality time with my children. Now be a good boy and run some other errand. A beautiful, majestic white swan gracefully glides across the lake. What an adorable baby swan!
The small pond is a beautiful feature in this part of the forest. You imagine a variety of bird life would find this a very suitable place to travel for the breeding season. A log lies on the ground, apparently forgotten by whoever cut it from the nearby stump. A tree, now not much more than a stump, has presumably been reduced to its present size by a woodcutter. It is a baby bird, and not a terribly pretty one at that. The best place to attempt that would be from the lower bank. Don't throw that into the lake. Don't, 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 don't. The best place to attempt. You walk into position and try to catch the baby bird. You throw the net over the pond and the baby bird is caught unharmed. You have You release the little bird into the pond. This is the northwest corner of Weirwood Forest. Passage to the south is blocked by a plethora of large bushes and plants. To the west you see the rear of some sort of cave. To the far west you notice a path running north. These plants have long. This is the. It feels. It feels. Not. 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 It feels. You pick up the white feather and put it carefully away. The bridge spanning the chasm looks unstable and tottery. Are you entertaining thoughts about crossing it? The deep gorge has a bridge spanning it. Oh my, it's a long way down, isn't it? You have just discovered the gravity of your situation. You have just discovered
The two rows of rocks stretch out like arms across the ground. How odd. It's like they're beckoning you to step between them. Oddly, the short path runs up to the mountain wall here, but leads nowhere else. Incredible. The door you have discovered has taken on the appearance of a face. It is silent, however, and almost seems to be waiting for something. It is a... Uh, greetings. I am King Graham of Daventry. Would you by any chance know of the way to a strange island on which stands a quartz tower in which a beautiful woman is being held captive? You feel more than a little foolish. Surely a door, even one with a face, would neither hear nor understand you. I am the door of destiny. I am sought out by many, found by few and opened by none so far. For indeed, only once can I be opened. Such is the magic that I am. Through me will you find the destiny you seek, if you can but perform a task. Anything! You feel intense exuberance that you have come so close to your goal in such a short time. You must bring me the gems of nature. I beg your pardon? The stone door rumbles from deep within. For a time, it says nothing. And then... Gems of three, I ask of thee to fetch, collect, and bring to me. In water shall you find the first, though not the type to quench your thirst. Spy the second, high in the sky, with wings or no, thou still must fly. Through swampy mire, so it is heard, in lone dark castle lies the third. Should you succeed, my noble king, to your fair maiden, I will bring. I warn you, though, you should beware. A danger cloaked awaits you there. Without warning, the stony face falls silent. As you watch, it gradually smooths out to become the mountainside face once more. You notice that, within the door, three shallow indentations have sunk into the rock's surface. Presumably, the three gems of nature must fit here. Now all you have to do is find them. How did that poem go again? You have just discovered You have just discovered A piece of paper has blown here in the wind. The air The paper is torn and dirty. It looks like a flyer of some sort. You smooth out the torn and tattered paper and read Curios I have, to the town do come, awaiting I am. Greetings again, merchant. Yes, many greetings. Need you have now for my wares of great specialty? 
What wares do you sell, good merchant? For yourself, behold them. You look over the merchant's wares of great specialty and quickly reevaluate them as junk. You seem to have quite a selection of, well, quite a selection. A keen eye have you. In an item or two, provoke interest, I might? A daunting task. Uh, uh, rather, by all means. This I have. You appraise the object he holds up to you. It is a simple shell, intricately fashioned into the shape of a comb. The workmanship is unlike anything you have ever seen. Fascinating. Where did you find such a thing? Oh, old it is. From ancient times descends. Valuable, without question. Royal property, former, to be sure. You consider his story. Then you begin wondering which beach he found it on. Repressing the earth. If I were to, say, purchase the shell, what would it cost? A trifle would you expend. Seven golds. I fear that I did not bring any money. Curiosity, I find, in one who travels but with nothing to barter brings. Good point. Might you trade the shell comb for something? The merchant ponders over this for a moment. Of value, many things are. Of fancy, only one I have. And that is? Pearls. From curiosity, have you knowledge of the speaking pumpkin that once sat here? Misplaced it has become. Speaking pumpkin? Oh, uh, that. Uh, no, I do not see it anywhere. Sorry. Good merchant, does this interest you? Thanking you, but no. You open the clam and discover, to your surprise, a dazzling pearl. Would you be interested in this pearl? Indeed, I would. In return, the shell I present to you. May you be always groomed well. The merchant grabs the pearl and tosses the shell comb to you. Then he saunters off. History will decide how greatly you were just swindled. Oh, what a beauty! This will be worth a fortune back home. Yes? Could you recommend another good book? There! The librarian has placed the This book is entitled, Way Below Your League, A Look at Sentient Aquatic Life. Browsing through it, you notice an interesting excerpt.